Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. All Things Middle Earth here. In this season that we're in, I'm running a bit of a different lineup than the typical meta or as close to the meta as I would normally run. This season I am running Sauron, who's very much in the meta, along with the Shadow. I am running Saruman and I'm running Skullhelm as sort of a anti-meta crowd control lineup that I'm just kind of testing. I've heard good things about it. Um, I still have a lot of levels to get and a lot of reports to get before I give my kind of final consensus on this lineup. But I don't think we've covered Skullhelm or Saruman in a while on this channel. I do think we've recently done Shadow and Sauron, so I'll leave them be. But I thought in the next couple of videos, I would break down what I'm doing to run Skullhelm and Saruman in the next video, so stay tuned for that. But today we're looking at Skullhelm. We're going to look at the gear, the skills, the relic, um, everything under the sun. You need to know how to run Skullhelm, at least from what I'm doing. So all of that complete Skullhelm build coming up in just one second. All right, now before we jump into how to build Skullhelm or what gear to use, I just want to really quickly explain what Skullhelm is doing as a commander because that can help us all to understand how we should build her and skill her and all that kind of stuff. Again, I'm saying her, I, our Denazgul have gender. I don't know. I, won't, I don't want to get into it. Uh, we're not, we're not going to go there. But Skullhelm is a commander that wants damage and wants focus. If you look at her kit, everything she does has to do with dealing poison damage or focus damage in some way, shape, or form. And if you look at focus, it says affects a commander's focus, burn, and poison damage dealt and reduces the, the amount of damage taken from the aforementioned types. So the more focus we have on her through her gear, the more damage her skills that do focus and poison are going to deal. So that's the one thing we want to focus on. The second thing we want to focus on is going to be damage because this determines the ability to inflict any types of damage. So as much damage as possible, as much focus as possible. And the third thing that I like to do on Skullhelm is initiative. She's already pretty fast as it is, but I do feel like if you have a little bit on her, it just prevents uh, things from being stolen from Sauron because if you do get her skills stolen, it can be pretty rough. So I think damage, focus, and initiative as much as all those as you can is going to kind of set you up for success. Now I'm going to go through what gear I'm running so you guys can see, and then I'm going to share. I have a spreadsheet that kind of shows all the gear in the game. So you can look through it and see kind of looking at those three things, what you can put together on your account because every account's different. I've made a lot of videos. And by now you probably know what the best in slot like focus damage gear is. It's the same for all the commanders. So I'm going to leave that as a resource. And again, if you guys have questions, feel free to comment. I'll do what I can. But for me, again, looking for damage focus and initiative as much as possible. And that goes for our sets as well, which again, mine are not perfect, but I'm okay with them. First of all, I am running a blazing tongue. It has attack and focus. Now attack doesn't help us. That's for physical damage, but we do get some focus and I have decent refinement on this. So I have four times refined. Uh, which is one of my more refined weapons for her. So I feel like it just makes a lot of sense to run that with the uh, higher damage here up to 27. Next up, we have also agility here. So agility in the first two pieces. We have the golden skin. Again, not the best focus piece in the game, but it allowed me to make a set. We have some focus. We don't really care about the commander attack as much. The other things aren't bad, but we have those two pieces. Then we have a great wizard hat, which is the highest focus piece in the game with fortitude and a fine smoking pipe, which also has damage as well as focus, the highest focus piece in the game as well. That's what I was able to piece together for her. And again, like I said, I'll be linking this spreadsheet down below and you can sort through all these different things and look for the focus items. So if you if you have an Obsidian Dagger, it does have more focus. It does have some initiative. Um, honestly, it's a great piece that she could use. The um, Morgul Blade's another great option for weapon. Again, you can sort by the different types here. And if you just want to look at armor, for example, you can only sort by that and see, okay, well, Protection Numenor is number one, then Great Play to the East, then Elven Cloak then golden skin, so on and so forth. But for me, this is what I could put together with the gear that I had that allowed me to make some sets. Again, I mentioned wanting initiative. Now, I don't have any initiative on the pieces, but I have a half agility set. So I'm kind of hoping that keeps her out of harm's way in the early parts of the battles. Okay, now next up for her skills, I think there's a few different ways you could do this. So I'd, I'd love to hear if you guys have different ways you build her. I tried to break it down on a spreadsheet to show why I'm doing what I'm doing. I just want her to put out as much damage as possible. So first off, we're running Executioner. Each round, it's going to deal 75% poison damage to three enemy formations. And from round five onward, it's going to deal the same amount of damage, uh, focus damage once again, with an additional five focus for the commander at level 10. Again, this is hitting three formations, commanders and units the entire time, and then doubling up from, from, from five onwards, so it's just a very good amount of damage going out. Next up, we have Dark Ranger, which is going to deal 450% focus damage, um, focus or poison damage to one or three random formation so again this could hit three and be a lot better one round it could hit one i just averaged it out to two in my math just because that's going to be the average you get you could have better or worse luck but it's a pretty big hit but it's got a, a good variation there 
Uh, and then the max level effect is poison damage has a 20% chance to inflict madness on the target for one chance, which is not a bad thing either. So those are the two skills that I'm running right now. My remaining points as I level her up are going to go into Nazgul. I'll have just enough at respect eight to put Nazgul at five points, which is an earlier round um, burst of focus damage. Um, and again, then poison damage at level five. So the goal is to run 10 in Executioner, 10 in Dark Ranger, and then five in Nazgul. If we look at this spreadsheet, this is what I put together right here. You can kind of see what I'm talking about with the numbers. So first of all, I have all our skills laid out, Lord of Wolves, Ex Executioner, Nazgul, Dark Ranger. And at the very bottom, you can see what their total damage over 10 rounds. Now, I'm not great at calculating the stuff in game, but just the total percent damage that these things are dealing is kind of what I have here. And you can see based on rounds, it goes round one, two, three, four, just above my head here. You can see how much damage is done. So if you go the entire battle, Executioner is going to have 1,300, uh, 3,600, sorry, percent damage going out. And Dark Ranger is going to have 2,700. So the highest damage skills are right here. Now, there it is worth saying if the battle does not go 10 rounds, something like Nazgul deals all its damage in the first two and a half, three rounds, whatever it is. So this is better than other things, depending on how long you make it. So some people might like other things better. To me, the goal is to draw out or have a victory and have this thing go 10 rounds where she's dealing a lot of damage from uh, Executioner as well as Dark Ranger and then getting a bulk of Nazgul in with at least just five points. Again, that's a respect date. You may not have as much, but the goal is to max out Executioner and Dark Ranger, just like I'm doing right here. But that's my math on it. Again, I'm never going to be a math expert. So if you're seeing this and know Skullhelm really well, let me know if something's not not correct. But I just kind of put in the uh, averages for the, the percentage of damage going out per round to see if there was a clear front runner. And it seems pretty clear to me that uh, you know Lord of Wolves is very low, so I wouldn't run that. And I think Nazgul... There's a case for it if you're only planning to go a few rounds. Um, and again, you have some stuns here in the first few rounds. So there is, a, you know, a, again, a Z6 Skullhelm would be great to run all three of those. But for the most part, this is how I like to skill her. Now, looking at the relic for Skullhelm, she has a very, very interesting relic. I usually like to just give a pass or fail on them because they're so expensive. Um, you have to really prioritize what you want for Skullhelm. If you are running a very, very, very well Skullhelm, I think the relic is definitely worth it. It is such a hard hitting relic. It says round one against one enemy uh, deal 1500 poison damage, prioritizing range units. Um, and then against range units, you get an extra 6% uh, damage lasting to the combat. The big thing is just that it is an absolute bomb that goes off in round one. The problem with Skullhelm's bow is that if you come up against a Gandalf the White or Gandalf the Grey that has white counsel and you hit within one of these instances that Gandalf the White or Grey are reducing damage, and there are other commanders that reduce damage too, so it's not just these guys. So anybody that reduces damage for a certain amount of hits or whatever it is could potentially eat that relic. If you spent all this time refining, fully refining this relic, it would suck to hit someone with white counsel. So I just think I want to probably give it a caveat of saying if you're going to run it, you have to make sure you know what you're getting into. I think there's a lineup you could have her in that tries to clear white counsel out. Maybe she goes last in your lineup, so she has the best chance of hitting um, actual, you know, full damage with this. But overall, is it the first relic or second relic I get? Probably not. I think there are more safe, good options. However, if you're really running a very willed Skullhelm and you have the right lineup, I do think it could be one of the better relics in the game. So I'm going to honestly just give it a break even on the pass and fail. I don't think it's bad. Um, it's expensive. And I think you could have a bad battle with it. You could also have a crazy one where it works out that this just deals a crazy amount of damage and makes her that much better. Again, 1500% damage. If you look at her skill sheet, that's more than Lord of Wolves is going to deal the entire battle. Uh, it's about the same that Nazgul is going to deal the entire battle. Uh, again, these these kind of double up on it, but still, that's like adding an entire different skill that's going to go on the entire battle, and it goes off very early. Um, there are other utility uses for her doing like eagle bombs or things, which I won't get, get into today, but this would just help a lot with a lot of those things. So I'm going to break even on it. I think it's very interesting. But let me know what you guys think on the relic if you think it's one you should stay away from or if it's worth trying to kind of put your speeds in a certain way that other commanders go first and clear out stuff first or if it's just not worth messing with. Now, as far as who to run Skullhelm with in terms of what commanders to run with her, I would try and do some balance of support and damage. Just like the meta is Gandalf the White and Sauron as support with Dane and Beorn as damage. Again, she could plug into any of those damage slots that we talk about a lot in the channel. So she can be run with any combination of damage and support. I'm running her with a kind of really a full damage lineup. There's not anybody that's true support in this lineup. Well, okay, we have Sauron as support. So we're running Sauron as full support. Everyone else is damage, but they all have an amount of madness or stun, some kind of crowd control to help out with it. So she can definitely put into different things, but 
I would say the easy answer is just a balance of support and damage in the lineup where she's one of your full support uh, or full damage commanders. Now, as far as troops to run for Skalholm and for this entire army you're running, I'm going to suggest Berserkers. A lot of people like to run a combination of Berserkers and Guardians. Guardians are a little bit more tanky, but they're slower. The Berserkers are going to have 13 initiative. Uh, Guardians, if I can double check really quickly, they're a lot slower with five initiative. So five for Guardians, 13 uh, for the Berserkers. So in my mind, it makes more sense to run the Berserkers as a way to be a little bit faster. Again, you want your army going first. You don't get things stolen. If you have commanders in your lineup that don't care about speed at all, they could run Guardians, but I would say all Berserkers or a combination of them, and they are going to get that small troop bonus, which does give them a little bit more initiative in the battle as well. So I definitely would just go, if you're all evil, just go Berserkers. If you want, run a combination of Berserkers and Guardians. But on Skullhelm, I do think she cares about speed, so I would run Berserkers on her. But that will pretty much do it for our quick guide on Skullhelm. Again, I want to hear what you guys think about her. I think she's a very interesting commander. I think she can deal some crazy damage. I've seen some crazy, crazy wild ones that are just a lot of fun to watch. But I want to hear what you guys think. Again, anything we talk about in the video, uh, the, the gear guide right here, this will be linked down below in the description. Because I can sit here all day and say, yes, run this best in slot. But most of us aren't able to make the perfect best in slot every time. And if you are, you probably already know what the best in slot is. So if you're an average player or even like I have a decent account, I still can't run the perfect set of gear on everyone. So I have to get creative and figure out options that have some of what I want uh, while still kind of making me you know, able to run other commanders too, because you are going to run four commanders in this formation. So you need to make it work. But let me know what you guys think. Uh, coming up next, coming up very soon, is going to be a Saruman video. So stay tuned for that. That'll be out shortly, but that'll do it for this one. And I'll see you guys in a future video.